Okay so we are going to be doing corn today so let me just get into character. I will render the main. Karen Burn. I will light a thousand fires and stand amidst the ashes of your world. I will wreak havoc upon your lands like you have never known for carnage is my name and when the darkness clears there will be only blood and skulls for they are my due. Blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne they will shout for I care not from where they come. Corn, variously known as the Lord of Skulls, the Blood God and Carve, is one of the four primordial powers of the 40k universe and the strongest of the Chaos Gods. He is the ruler of primal instinct, the violence and murder runs from his throne of skulls he lords over the countless wars and deaths of the benighted universe. Less known however is that he also calls the domains of honor. Duty and martial pride is owned though the brutality of the 41st millennium means that he has become a monster of spited metal and carnage. Despite this however, his followers are as likely to be knights of honor and valor as they are to be brutal murderers and psychotic killers. Korn is the second oldest of the Chaos Gods, coming into existence around the time of Terra's Middle Ages in the second millennium and he calls Slanish his enemy, despising the dilettante deities' excesses and lack of discipline. As such, his followers practice their own form of mercy and rarely linger when killing an enemy for the suffering of a foe actually strengthens a dark prince who takes sadistic delight in the agonies of others. The Lord of Rage is a brutal figure, a beast of thick muscle clad and brass armor forged in the fires of hate itself. His head resembles that of a feral dog though it is obscured by a brutal helmet adorned with the skulls of conquerors and leaders whose legacies are drowned in blood. He sits atop a throne of brass lifted high by the almost endless pile of skulls beneath. This mountain of skulls is formed of countless species, from tyrannic human and the heads of serpents and enemies alike soar upwards for the blood god cares not from where they come. Lastly, at his side, Korn wields his ancient sword known variously as the Warbringer, Warmaker and the End of All Things. It is said that this plane has the power to tear a world asunder and with one swing of his fell weapon, Korn is able to breach the veil completely and release his servants upon the universe. The rule of Korn is a simple rule indeed, blood and more blood must be spilled. His temple is the battlefield and his sacrifice is the lives of those slain in war, willingly or not. All warrior cultures pay homage to the blood god whether it be the feral death cults of long lost planets or the roaming bands of chaos space marines that slaughter for the sake of murder. Every life taken in rage grants strength to Korn and those who slay their allies are especially favored for they understand the true nature of their lord. He cares not from where the blood flows, only that it does. For all dead are equal in the eyes of Korn and those who pay allegiance to this spited king must kill every day or incur his displeasure. Despite his violent nature, Korn's martial spirit means that the weak are looked upon with disgust. Furthermore, the servants of Slanish who he sees as depraved and disciplined murderers are favored targets of his men and the death of such a sick warrior is met with great pleasure by their god. In close second are the sorcerers of Seen who Korn regards as weak and despicable, unwilling to engage in fair combat and relying upon the cowardly weapons of sorcery to win their battles. The followers of Korn have various sacraments and rituals themselves, the most common of which is the reverence of the number 8. Squads are often formed around the sacred number and when rituals are required, many aspects follow suit. They also have a number of unique battle crews including blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne. Kill. Maim. Burn. Kill. And the world eaters have been known to shove break their backs when charging into battle. They also commonly wear the red and brass armor of corn, highlighting their allegiance to the Lord of Rage. Corn's followers do not include humans alone however as anyone willing to spill blood for its own sake is welcome in the Skull Court. Hawks, Nakali and Rapgol have all been known to pay allegiance to Korn and men have found themselves worshipping him without their knowledge. Temple assassins and death cultists will often provide murder as their sacrifice and some unknowingly draw the attention of the blood god while others may claim to worship another deity of war without realizing that their true lord is Korn. Also, some just worship the blood god flat out for the blessings of the red god are of great benefit to those who make murder their craft. Korn does not care who kills as long as blood is shed and those who displease their master will most likely find themselves the next offering to their brutal deity. Despite the plethora of offerings, Korn's hunger for death can never be sated. His drive demands the slaughter of millions, the raising of worlds and the screams of millions as the skies turn black with ash. Peace has no place in the blood god's eyes for only in murder and the dance of death can true beauty ever be realized. The sad fact is that even those races claiming peace and unity feed this craving for there will always be those who resist, always those who will fight for their own freedom and their own ambitions. 
Corn needs no justification and cares not for the reason and those who cling most closely to the crimson path understand the truth underlying everything. Death is the only outcome and killing the death killing and blood sculpt demands retribution. The fall to Corn is swift. At first it is merely honor and beauty, then pistols are holstered for the feel of a blade biting deep. Soon enough only the most brutal massacres excite any feeling at all and soon the time between battle is a time of torture. Eventually, as the years go by, there is only war and those with the most honest of intentions have become their own worst nightmare, even in the land zoned by the blood god. Battle is the only certainty as favored generals with their forces against one another and the blood that has marched in their millions to the clash of pointless law. Only when Havoc unleashes its fell shriek to the armies of the Skull Lord march in tandem towards their newest target. The armies of Korn are vast indeed and varied in form though singular in purpose. At the forefront march the endless mounts of blood letters, brutish creatures of red muscle wielding swords of hage origin capable of tearing through the thickest plate with ease. Leading these forces come the heralds of Korn. Bloodletters who have proven themselves time and again in the eyes of corn and who command the very blood they seek to shed. Last to the hierarchy come the bloodthirsters and demon princes of the blood god, towering wicked monstrosities of brass and steel. Wielding axes out shriek and unholy tongues as they cut through the air. Nowhere does a more brutal army exist and their psychosis is matched only by their skill with blades. Alongside the demonic march the mortal and metal followers of blood. Lithic cultists screech in prayers to their god Armo down and their thousands without care as the traitor marines and iron forged machines laugh in madness. Favored amongst their fallen kin are the world eaters led by Khan the betrayer and their demon Primarch Angra, both of whom represent the pinnacle of slaughter like nothing else. Hanging dogs of blood and muscle run in tandem alongside their fellow warriors led by Kayak the three-headed hound of the apocalypse and at the forefront rides the skulltaker atop his mighty juggernaut, slaying all those of worth who would dare raise weapons against the lord of war. The domains of Korn are many and vast in scope, the god of war having conquered many other planets within the Isle of Terror. Without exception, his worlds are lands of despair and misery with butchery being the only rule that any abide by. Storms rage across crimson skies and the very ground shifts and turmoil as metal-clad legions meet in battle under dawns of ash. Earthquakes tear across the battered ground and geysers of molten metal are rushed skyward, engulfing legions of men in inferno as the very earth itself joins in the relentless carnage and even the rivers stream in tides of blood, dividing the countless territories of demon princes, champions of corn and ambitious bloodletters who cross these hellish obstacles to meet in battle for battle's sake. To see a world of corn is to see a world at war and to truly understand that conflict is not a human trouble but a living, breathing entity. It is to know an eternal truth and as such, it is to know despair. Within corn's home, the land of grass and blood, there are a series of volcanoes named corns raged by those who study the profane. Reaching endless into the sky, these vicious mountains constantly belch forth streams of ash and molten metal under their titanic shadows. Herds of juggernauts hunt for fresh prey. Pressed onwards by the bloodthirsty guardians of corn. These demonic beasts are not the only sentinels, however, as those who would invade the land of war will soon discover. The very metal on the ground awaits intruders, awakening as huge beasts of steel when interlopers arrive, bringing their strange weapons to bear against their foe and falling asleep once more when the threat has been extinguished. At the base of these mountains lie the demon forges that churn out the weapons and vehicles of the blood god's armies. It is here that the furnace demons fashion weapons of lunatic design that even the most depraved sorcerer would fear wielding and it is on these planes of woe that they test their bizarre creations. Occasionally, when a mountain erupts, a forge will be flooded of lunatic demons. Insane from their captivity will erupt and engage in a rampage of slaughter. Corn cares not for such a loss however for they will always be more willing to ply their fiendish craft. No blacksmith work is committed here and the sounds of metal striking metal are overlapped by the screams of those slain by murder itself. Across the realm, beyond the mountain guarding Corn's land, storms of warp energy coalesce, forming vast pits of bubbling blood that vomit forth new demons of Corn. These portals do not last long or perhaps they do. For time has no meaning in the realms of chaos. It as soon as one runs dry another soon takes its place, seemingly arriving at random. None ever awaken in the heart of this land for there lies the brass fortress, surrounded by the lake of slaughter from which arrive great leviathans of bone and blood and great idol waves of blood that round all armies that attempt to breach the cruel keep of the Black God. Finally, within this bastion of hate, lies the dreaded skull throne or corner top which sits the Lord of Rage himself. Guarded by countless elite bloodletters and millions of flesh hounds that search eternally for new heads to take, 
Those few armies that survived its far do not survive for much longer for Corn Wheel's power like no other and Fury of Rage itself is the only reward usurpers will ever gain for Shikorn ever. March to war. Chaos itself would tremble against his might and not even Siege could predict the outcome of such a battle. For in the end, there is only war and in war. There is only blood for the blood god and skulls for the skull throne. Straight in legend has it that only one has ever breached fully into the realm of corn and his reward was a life of unrelenting bloodshed. The orc warbus demon could have led away. Straight into the heart of the blood god's realm and for countless years and endless days, he annihilated every force sent his way. Demon Prince and Bloodthirster alike fell to his mighty army and where one orc died, a dozen more soon took its place. Unfortunately, his army stumbled into the realm of the Blood Prince, a favor Demon Prince of Korn and it was here that he met his end. So impressed with Korn, however, that he brought him back to life to fight for eternity against his elite guard. Still, to this day, the Orc Horde battles across plains of ash and blood against creatures of hate and as every night falls, the Orc Horde once more awakens to prepare against the great enemy, a heaven no Orc can imagine better. Blood for the Blood God! Blood for the Blood God! Blood for the Blood God! I must say I do enjoy these lore videos even if they are a bit different from the usual content. Again if you enjoy this you have to go and check out Jackie Blop's other posts link in the description as always. They are great and really capture the feel for Warhammer 40k as there is only war. Anyway make sure to like and subscribe for more.